Welcome back to the Ecclesia Project. I am a freedman of God as your host on this journey to discover the lost Ecclesia of God. Um, this is episode 63, and I'm going to try to make this a short episode, believe it or not. Um, and I, I wanted to really do a quick recap and and make some applications on the last episode um because in the last episode uh we we were talking about um in in first corinthians 10 we were talking about um how the how paul had referenced these trials that were uh that that the people of israel in in the wilderness had to go through and we referenced there was four trials that 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 paul referenced and so we analyzed each one of them and we we kind of talked about uh you know the pattern that was that was apparent with each trial so i wanted to first of all let's go over that pattern um in in the the first the first thing that happened was would you'd have this rebellious sin or this um, kind of a mood, uh, an attitude that would come about, whether it's grumbling or or testing God, um, you know, in the sense that you know why why have you brought us out in this wilderness to die? Uh, you know, we don't have any food, we don't have any water. Like you don't care about us, you're kind of twisted to do this to us. You know, who, what kind of a God are you? So it, it's those kinds of accusations that they're making against God. Uh, they would grumble against Moses and Aaron. You know, it's your fault that we're in this situation. Uh, has nothing to do with what we've done. It's it's what you know. You you kind of made us do it, kind of thing. So they would blame the leadership. Uh, you know, then they get caught up with the morality. With the uh, with the Moabite women, and and that was part of the Balaam strategy to corrupt the people of God. I mean, as as we've talked about before, Satan's best strategy is not to confront God and His faithfulness, but to uh, actually undermine the people and their faithfulness. And hopefully, if he can, they can corrupt the people, then God will walk away, and God will say, you know, I can't. This is supposed to be a holy gathering. You're supposed to be. Are people that I own, look at how you're acting. I can't associate with this kind of people and just walk away. And that way, this people of God just disappears. And that's the goal of Satan is to is to make sure that, you know, there doesn't exist any people of God because the people of God is a very powerful force uh, for God in 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 this earth, in, the, in Satan's kingdom, where, where Satan rules right now. Um so corrupting the uh, people of God is the is the best strategy and that's the strategy that he would employ uh over and over and it still does um the the you know the other one as far as you know uh setting up idols uh trying to distract the people from the, the actual God and 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 put their their focus on another god uh, you know another leader that that they would trust and follow and uh, and in we kind of made the application that we're in you know in the church system the 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 congregation uh those in the pews they really put their trust in the pulpit they put their trust in the you know the senior pastor to to uh, you know, they, he looks very sincere. He he wants to. Uh, he seems like he really wants to help, and 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 he claims to know God, and he's a man of God, and he and he knows the Word of God, and he's going to help you understand the Word of God. And so this is this is the this is where people put their trust. Uh, they don't um, really put put their, they don't go directly to Christ to buy their gold, to buy their garments. Uh, to buy their uh, ISAV, uh, they they go to the head pastor to get his opinion about what is the way of salvation, what is the way of righteousness, how should we live as as disciples of Christ. They they don't go to to Jesus directly, and that would mean to go to scriptures directly and 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 basically analyze 
the scriptures yourself and allow the scriptures to speak rather than uh, taking the word of somebody that has elevated himself uh, uh, on a pulpit. So, and, and, and this, is, this is what I fear is that, you know, in, in the day, in the final day, uh, people are going to come and, and, and say, yeah, I, you know, I knew, I knew Jesus. I, I knew, I knew you. Uh, um, I, you know, I, I would speak about you all the time. I'd listen, uh, you know, uh, you know, I, teachings about you all the time. And, and, and I would follow those teachings and I would, I would, you know, try, try to do the best I could to, to, uh, you know, go fall in line with, with, with what I've been taught. And, you know, and Jesus would say, well, I, you know, you actually didn't know me. You, you knew the senior pastor, you knew the teachings of the church system. You knew that, you knew that very well. And you followed that very well, but you didn't know me. Okay. And you just assumed that they would represent me properly. And you assumed that I sent them, which I didn't. And um, so you need you you needed to come to me, and and to listen to what I said, and 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 look at the words of Scripture yourself, and analyze those words, and try to understand them without, uh, uh, you know, having this teaching, this 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 constant messaging from the church system to to kind of dilute you and deceive you and 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 uh, and and just cause you to miss the point that I was trying to make. Um, so that that's kind of the the problem. It, it's you, you have to know Christ, okay? You have to know Christ, and to know Christ, you have to understand his teachings uh, from his own you know, statements. And and that means you have to read scripture yourself. And that means you have to decide for yourself and 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 to analyze it yourself. And you have to put in the work. Um so that this is always the issue, uh, you know, and 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 Christ warns over and over again about this idea where people think that they know him and they don't. And uh and he'll say, I, I never knew you. You know, you never came to me. You always came to somebody who said that they knew me, and said that 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 I sent them, and and they said that they knew my words and they knew my commands, and but you know they didn't, so they didn't get it right, and you never came to me, to to see uh, from scripture, uh, what I said, and and what I what I meant when you know when I when I said it, and so. That that's that's the concern, and that's the fear that everyone actually should have, um, who have who hasn't you know independently gone in to scriptures and 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 really you know torn it apart themselves and and tried to really understand and and make sense uh, out of the complete uh, you know instructions of Christ and, and how it's consistent from Genesis to Revelation. So, um, but in any case. Uh, that's idol. That's idolatry. Is what it is. You're replacing Christ with a, a, a you know someone, another being, whether it be a, a spiritual being like you know like a demon, or a, a physical being like like a head pastor or a, a, a professor or whoever it might be, an author of a book, and and never really dive in yourself and and do some independent analysis and thinking on your own allowing the spirit to guide you and and to teach you uh, and and making it all make sense where you can see the big picture you can you can make sense out of it so um so that's the idolatry that was talked about and and that and that's and that's why you know uh, you know, Paul would bring up the idolatry, and we talked about that because of the divisions, and this, I, you know, the, the idea that they're, they're trying to get away from this design that God has, you know, this this ecclesia that God has designed, and make their own ecclesia, you know, and and selecting their own members and selecting their own leader, and um, and and this is the danger is is that we break away from the design of God for whatever reason. And and you can see in the, uh, um, you know, for for the people of Israel in the wilderness, why did they make the idol? They got impatient. 
they got tired of waiting for Moses to come back. And they said, you know, we don't know what happened to him. And we're bored. And we've been sitting here. And, and you know, we're not doing anything. And we're restless. And we want to do something. You know, we want to get some. And so then they, they make this idol. And plus, you know, Moses was just making it difficult for us anyway. So, and and this is the very thing that, that the law had already been given to them. They already knew that this was wrong. They knew that this is exactly what, what God instructed them not to do. And they still went ahead and did it. So, and this, and, you know, we're not, uh, we're not, we're not above that uh, as, as people, uh, you know, um, those that profess to know Jesus uh, do the same thing and, and they get restless, they get bored and they want, some action or they just it's too slow or they're tired of waiting on god and they and they want to go forward and they want to go forward now and so they make their own they plant their own vineyard and they work in that vineyard uh, or they go to someone else's vineyard to work in their vineyard and they and they just say i don't want to you know i'm not i'm tired of waiting to uh you know to 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 get to christ's vineyard and and when is he gonna get you know plant a vineyard near me that I can work in it and, and you know, all of these things. So um, this is the problem. Uh, we, we, we have, we fall into the same traps that they did. And, uh, and, and we shouldn't because we, we are, we're a different type of, uh, you know, person we, 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 we're, we're, we are to be, are to have our hearts regenerated, not like the people of Israel who did not have regenerate hearts. They could easily fall into traps and easily be uh, for put into trials. And and so these these are the trials that we, that was referenced by Paul. Um, and 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 the idea was that this mood would be contagious. It would it would spread throughout the people and and it would capture the people. Right and 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 would seize the people as some uh, translations would 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 you know they talk uh, you know they would translate that word seize it or or uh, uh, what was the other overtake they would overtake the people it, it it's the idea where you have a, a a sin a rebellious sin that would dominate a people and left alone the people would be completely destroyed I mean they would become unholy just as Satan would you know designed it. And, and it's kind of an infection that he would put into, uh, you know, into the people and it would grow and, 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 and infect everyone there. And all of a sudden the people would become rotten to the core and would have to be abandoned. That's the, always the plan of Satan to, to destroy a people of God. Um, and, and this is the, this was the Balaam approach, the Balaam strategy, but it's really Satan's strategy. And, and you know, and how he destroys peoples, peoples of God. So this is how it would start. And so you'd have this sin, it would kind of infect all the people, and Satan, I believe, is is behind that in in uh, kind of making this sin contagious and, and where people would all of a sudden fall in line with it and get kind of caught up in it, and, and all of a sudden it would dominate the, the entire gathering. And, and this is what could happen in an ecclesia. And this is why Paul was pointing it out. The same thing that happened to the people of Israel could also happen in an ecclesia. And, and we talked about the ways in which it was starting to happen. And, and, whether they, and the fact that they might have been in a trial at the time that Paul was writing this letter. So that's the first stage that, this, that's, that the sin would, would kind of... Uh, infect all the people and and the, and seize the entire gathering. Okay, that's the first stage. The second stage is God would respond. Cuz if he didn't intervene, it would be all over. God has to respond. And and that's why when Jesus in in Laodicea, the message of Laodicea would say, uh, you know, those I love, I rebuke and discipline, okay? So, uh, I mean, we we can I mean, I, I'm not sure if I if I uh if I showed that already before, but in in Revelation three, the message of Laodicea, um, and let me share the screen for you a little bit. Oh, sorry. Um, so, in in uh, three um, nineteen, okay, 
he says, those whom I love, I repro- I reprove and discipline. Therefore, be zealous and repent. So, um, we looked at this passage. We looked at this verse before. We, we discussed how this the those is is uh, refers to ecclesia, uh, not individuals, but ecclesia at this point because therefore be zealous and repent is in the first person singular. So he's commanding them, um, you know, as an as an ecclesia, as as a you know a, as as one gathering to be zealous and repent. That's what this whole you know this whole the, the main complaint, the main accusation here is that you're you're not zealous, you're not cold or hot, and, and you need to be, uh, he wish you were cold or hot. So he wants uh, the ecclesia to to fire up, okay? That, that's been the, the whole uh, context of what he's saying. And so when he says, be zealous and repent, who's he telling to repent? The ecclesia, okay? And... And so he says, those whom I love, I, repro- I reprove and discipline. So the, 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 I think the, the, the best interpretation there is those ecclesiae that I love, okay? I reprove and discipline. And this is what he was doing in the Corinthian ecclesia, okay? Um, so um, in any event, uh, we're going to get to this in a second, but... Um, so that that's kind of the the uh you know the the first the first step is this this the sin that corrupts and and seizes a the the gathering the second step is God's response and this is the pattern that was going on in the people of Israel God would respond with some sort of intervention and the intervention is generally people dying okay there's a discipline there's a rebuke that happens and this rebuke comes in the form of sickness or, you know, some, something bad is going to occur to wake the people up. And we talked in all four trials that people died. You know, some people of Israel would die, so, you know, sometimes 3,000, sometimes 24,000. And, and so it, it wakes people up, gets people attention when people start dropping dead. So this is uh, God's response. And, and this is a way to, and we talked about this, how, how this response is actually a, uh, um, a, a way of escape that's provided by God because it's supposed to wake them up to cause them to repent. And, and then when they do and they say, Moses, you know, help us, you know, and, and this happened a couple times where, where uh, they would ask for relief because if, if, if God continued, they would all be dead. And so they need relief. They need they need someone to step up. They need someone to intercede. So God kind of gets the process going, and then they, you know, Moses or Aaron or uh, um, well, Phine- Phineas, uh, uh, those are the th- kind of the three intercessors that of the four trials. Um, so they would intercede on behalf of the people, okay? And they would intercede, and then and then the you know God would relent and say okay i i guess maybe they've learned they've repented they've learned and and so the people would endure so in that sense that's how the uh the people of god would endure the trial okay and and this is this happened over and over and over and uh and this is what paul i think believes is happening to the corinthian ecclesia right now uh, they are going through a trial, and Paul is trying to wake them up and trying to make sure that they understand what's going on, so that they they can endure as a people, you know, as as a new covenant people of God. So, um, anyway, so that's the pattern that would go on and on, and this is the pattern that's happening in the Corinthian ecclesia uh, as Paul writes the letter, and uh, I, I wanted to apply this understanding. Uh, you know, and and just kind of take take a look back at the ecclesia, ecclesia's prayer, okay. And I and I've done a little uh, translation. Uh, you know, we can look at what uh, it, this is in Matthew six. Um, I've done a, a more of an interpretive translation to kind of uh, you know where, where you know how I kind of come down on how this works, how how this you know should be uh, translated or interpreted. Um, 
I, it basically starts out with our Father who is in the heavens. This is actually plural. They they make it singular. You know, I guess they're kind of interpreting heavens to be heaven, uh, or maybe it's a different manuscript. I, I don't I don't honestly know. But our Father who is in the heavens, may your name be holy. Okay, that's what that's how I'm in kind of translating this part right here. May your name be holy. May your kingdom come, and your will be done. Okay, on earth as it is in heaven. Now, this is again, this may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What does this remind you of? This is exactly what Jesus you know tells people to do in Matthew 5. Uh, or, or wait a minute, no, it's not Matthew, I think it is in uh, where does he? I'm not exactly sure now, now I'm not sure where he says it. where he says seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all the was that in matthew 7 um hmm could have been in matthew 7 maybe um yeah i don't i let me i i would have to look that up again but where, where it says uh where is it in matthew? i i don't know um, so he, he says, we're seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Okay. And he talks about the lilies of the field. He talks about all this stuff. Um, oh yeah, it's, it's right here. Sorry. It is in Matthew six. Okay. But seek, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Well, that, that's what this prayer is saying. Uh, may your kingdom come, you know, seeking first the kingdom of God and your will be done and his righteousness, right? So seek seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness on earth as it is in heaven. Okay. That that's the prayer. So that's very consistent with the command of Christ uh, down here, uh, just a little further down the, the chapter. Or, you know, but right after he talks about don't worry about what you're gonna eat, what you're gonna wear. Um, so <clears throat> and then he says, uh, give us this day, and, and we've talked about this phrase a lot. Uh, and I don't, I don't think daily is a correct translation. We talked about that, but let me let me get let me read you my interpretation, interpretive translation, so to speak. Uh, give us this day our purified and unified fellowship of the coming day. Okay, our purified and unified fellowship of the coming day. Now, daily I I translate as the coming day, uh, not you know because I I think that that's a better translation than daily. Um, and I, and I also, the bread, I, I kind of interpret as um, our purified and unified fellowship of the, of the coming day. And, and you can kind of see that in, um, let's see, well, uh, you know, I guess it didn't work out the way. No. Okay. So let me just go to it. I, I just want to go to Luke 14. If you go to Luke 14, just really quickly, um, this is, you know, Jesus was invited by the Pharisees to have you know, a meal. And so they're sitting around and of course they're watching Jesus. They're always watching Jesus, see how they can get, get to him. But he goes to the meal um, and, and he starts telling, you know, parables and, and uh, you know, talking to these guests about you know about things about the kingdom of god things like that and and he just he he, he was taught he, then he, he starts this parable about or i don't even know if it's a parable it's more of a teaching where he says when you give a lunch or a dinner don't invite your friends your brothers your relatives rich neighbors otherwise they may also invite you in return and that will be your repayment in other words you know uh there's no eternal reward there you, if you invite the people that can return the favor. So he says, when you give a reception, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed since they don't have the means to repay you. And, and you can be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. So here he's giving a, a teaching that, you know, basically don't, don't live for the here and now, L you know, live for the hereafter. Um, and 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 collect and start accumulating heavenly wealth and he's saying you will you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous and this prompted someone and he said when one of those 
who were reclining at the table with him heard this, heard this teaching, he said to him, blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. And so it's kind of like this Jewish understanding about what it means to eat bread in the kingdom of God. First of all, you're admitted into the kingdom. That's that's number one. Second of all, you're, you're enjoying a fellowship and, and a, a kind of a higher uh, purity and, and unified fellowship that you just not going to have uh, on earth. And so you, when you eat bread, it's the, it's, it's the whole idea of fellowshipping. It, it, the, eating bread and, and koinonia, they come, it comes together. It's just they're hand in hand, right? It, you know, where they, where they use this phrase, eating bread, as a way of, uh, you know, kind of um, uh, uh, re- referring to the idea of everyone coming around in its wedding feast or whatever it is. And, and in, in fact, th- right after that, um, Jesus would talk about a big dinner, invited many and all these people coming to this dinner and they're all having dinner together. So that's the kind of idea that the, that the Jewish people had about the kingdom of God. It was a time of fellowship, a time of unity, a time of purity, where you would all just uh, be together and, and just be at one people. And, and, and that, that's what was so exciting about it. And that was so, uh, you know, that, that's what created the joy and, and, and the anticipation uh, was, was that type of thing. Not, not necessarily ruling and, and telling people what to do in, in a kingdom and being a big, big shot. It, it's more of a, a being together in, in a, in one, as one people and, and, and having that, that care and love and, and affection for each other. That's really what was the attractive part of, of being in the kingdom and eating bread in the kingdom. So th- this is why I, I kind of uh, look at this phrase when you have, give us this day, okay, um, um, our, and, I, and I, again, I interpret bread as our uh, purified and unified fellowship of the coming day, okay? So, because you have this bread and you have this kingdom, you have this, this they're together, right? They're together, bread and kingdom. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth on earth as it is heaven. Now give us this day, this this bread for the coming day or this purified and unified fellowship for the coming day. You see how a, there's a connection there. Bread and the kingdom is right there. So that's why I think this is what is meant by Christ when he associates bread with the kingdom. It's usually associated with this meal and this, this uh, unified people that have this affection for one another and just and are just having a, just a great fellowship time so that's that's where i kind of that's why i lean that way as far as how to interpret that anyway if you go further it goes and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors okay so um and 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 i just the way i translate it is and, and forgive us our trespasses as as we also forgive those who trespass against us, which is, we're very used to that. Um, and, and what I wanted to look at was the next phrase, because what the next phrase is exactly what we're talking about in 1 Corinthians 10, where he says, and do not bring us into trial. Okay. Um, you know, this says, do not lead us. Lead us, you could put bring us, is the same thing. It, you know, it's the same word that means you could, you, you know, you, you can translate this, bring us into temptation, the same thing as trial, into trial. Um, but rescue us, or deliver us, rescue us from the evil one. And, and so this, the idea here is, uh, you know, there's this prerequisite, it seems like, where you have this forgive, forgiving those that trespass against you as an ecclesia, those that persecute you. It, it's like when Jesus says, you know, forgive them for they not know what they do. Uh, uh, or or Stephen, when he, when, he, he, when he asked God to forgive those who were stoning him, it's that idea where you are uh, forgiving those that trespass against you. And that in that way, God will forgive the ecclesia for all the times that the ecclesia uh, um, will, will trespass against God. Okay, and 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 this is 
a key point. So if the if the ecclesia has a has a has a kind of a a, a uh, you know a kind of a forgiving spirit uh, that that they have this this uh, willingness to forgive those that that persecute the ecclesia, which there will be many if it's a true ecclesia of God, uh, because you'll have a big target on your back, like I said. But if you ha if the ecclesia is dominated by a willingness to forgive those that persecute the gathering. Um, then you're, you're, there's going to be this, uh, a, the, God is going to be more willing and more, uh, um, you know, um, eager to forgive the ecclesia of the trespasses the ecclesia does against God. So, um, and in, that, in this way, the, then the next phrase is, this next request comes, and do not, to, and do not bring us into trial. Okay, so if if God is is willing to forgive the sins, a lot of times God can prevent these sins from going viral, so to speak. In other words, prevent these sins from from be, infecting the entire gathering, as Satan wants to do. If the the ecclesia as a whole is kind of uh, cold. And and unforgiving, I have my my feeling is is that God will be less willing to uh, forgive those sins and allow Satan to uh, make uh, you know basically um, weaponize a, a certain sin to infect the entire gathering and or, or weaponize an, an attitude um, or a mood. That's going to infect the entire gathering and force the gathering into a trial. Okay, because once the gathering's infected, once the gathering is seized, once the gathering is overtaken, okay, then you're forced into a trial because there's some purging that has to be done. Okay, so it's it the the quicker you arrest this sin, uh, stop the spreading. Of, a, of an attitude or, or a mood that's rebellious and is not right, not holy, it's unholy, okay? You wanna arrest it, you wanna nip it at the bud, you wanna stop it from spreading because once it it seizes the gathering, then the gathering is gonna be forced into a trial. And when the gathering's forced into a trial, people are gonna die, okay? And you don't want that or people are gonna get sick or there's gonna be some, you know, God is gonna, need to respond to save the people you see in other words to rescue the people from the trial to to provide an escape for the people okay god must intervene with discipline and rebuke you, you understand so the best thing is to never get to the trial to begin with to make sure that the the the, that whatever sin it is, whether it's immorality, complaining, or testing God, or whatever whatever it might be, that it's nipped at the butt, that it doesn't spread, that it doesn't seize the gathering, overtake the gathering. Okay, because um, once once that happens, you know, and that's exactly what Satan wants is that to happen. Once that happens, then the gathering, to, in, in order to save it, in order to rescue the people, to allow the people to endure this trial. Um, God's going to have to intervene because because if the sin completely infects, if God does nothing and just you know just it's hands off, the the sin will infect and 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 defile the entire people very quickly, and and God will have to walk away. It, there's there's no choice. You you can't basically the people have failed to keep the new covenant, and 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 therefore there's a divorce that happens. Okay. Um, and and this is always you know the, then the, then the the lampstand's taken away and it's over, okay. So the 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 key is not to let it get that far, is to nip these these sins, nip these things at the butt, and and so this idea where where if the ecclesia have this attitude of forgiveness, and and God will forgive the ecclesia, there's a more willingness of God to 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 prevent or resist Satan from weaponizing a sin to infect the entire gathering forcing it into a trial and, and once you're in a trial you may or may not survive it i mean god will provide a way of escape but what if you don't take it okay if the ecclesia doesn't take it 
then the ecclesia does not endure and the ecclesia will die and and be removed and and will fail as a people of god and the, and there will be a divorce okay so <clears throat> that that's that's kind of the the pattern that's kind of the way it works and and so i i, I think that when when you know you have these things put together this forgiving of the debts you know that kind of thing that and and then the next line is and do not bring us into trial but deliver us from this evil one don't allow the evil one to weaponize a sin weaponize an attitude or to un, un, unholiness to infect uh, to seize a gathering and then force us into a trial don't you know uh, you know deliver us uh, you know resist the evil one I mean, I mean you know rescue us from that and and that way uh, we don't have to go that far into a trial and that's why you know in the in the next verse in 14 jesus says for if you forgive others and the you again is you plural you as a, as a gathering if you forgive others for their trans transgressions your heavenly father will also forgive you as a gathering but if you do not forgive others then your father will not forgive your transgressions okay so I'm not saying that that can't apply to individuals and persons, but in this context, it, it's applying to a gathering because this prayer can only be said by a gathering, okay? And this whole thing is it's all you plural. So it, 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 there's no reason to think that he means each of you. He's, he's really talking about the gathering as a whole. You know, you, you as a gathering, ecclesia, you need to forgive others for their trespasses. And, 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 uh, and then you, you'll be forgiven, okay? And, and and you may not you won't be forced into a trial okay so i think that's kind of how it works um that's how this this might apply you know in first corinthians 10 to the to the ecclesia's prayer and um um so I, I wanted to i wanted to bring that out um okay so another another thing i wanted to to talk about was how this might apply uh to the messages, and we've we've talked a little bit about already about the messages to the ecclesiae, uh, and and particularly the five ecclesiae, where uh, Jesus is basically saying, "This is what I'm going to do to you. This is what's going to happen. And if you don't repent, he always would give them an out. He'd always give them a way of escape. What's your way of escape? How can you endure this trial by repenting? Right? And if you repent, then then we can then then the people you as an ecclesia will endure the trial. But I think in every single one of those messages, it's really every single one of those ecclesia is those five are in a trial. Okay, they've already kind of pushed it too far, and this 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 sin has already captured the ecclesia in every single one of those five. Okay, I, I think that's where they are in the, in the pattern. So they've already gone past the first step. They, they've already been captured, um, and now Jesus is responding and basically saying, "Look, you need to do this, this, and this, uh, or you need to repent, or this, this, and this is going to happen to you." And and you know, and maybe Jesus is already starting to discipline and rebuke, and they're already starting to feel, you know, the pain, and people might be dying. So, and and that's what I think these messages are. I think these messages are really uh, Jesus providing a way of escape to these five ecclesia, uh, ecclesia that, that are already enduring or, or in the midst of a trial. And the question of whether they repent or not uh, and whether it will determine whether they actually endure the trial and continue on. So, you know, having said that, um, you know, I, I, I there, there, there may be a little bit more hope for the, for the five ecclesiae than I originally thought. There may be. Uh, I, I usually would dismiss the idea that they would actually repent from from where they are because you know the way uh, Jesus describes it, you, you feel like, wow, you know, I don't know if they're gonna, how are they gonna get out of it, you know? But what this is, I think this is what. Uh, you know, the people of Israel did survive many trials. I mean, there, there's there's an example of four of them that we just went through. They survived four trials. So the idea that that some of these ecclesia, especially given the fact that 
many of the members are regenerate, have regenerate hearts, unlike the people of Israel. But many of these uh, members in the ecclesia have regenerate hearts, and they might respond to this discipline and rebuke that that Jesus is giving. So, you know, the I, the fact that Jesus does give this way out, you need to repent, and and then you can survive this, and that that Jesus is being active. In, in trying to open their eyes and trying to wake them up and, and, and show them they do need to repent, right? You know, some people need to wake up and realize, wow, I guess I really have fallen a, a long way from the law of Christ. I've, I've actually been violating the law of Christ without really realizing it, okay? Um, you know, like in Sardis, you know, you, you have a reputation for being alive, but you're dead to me. Now that that might have been a, a, a wake up call for a lot of the the, the members in Sardis. We're going, wow, you know, you know, I thought we thought that we were doing the right thing, but you know, you know what? We we haven't been listening to our head. We haven't been really been been following his instructions. We've been kind of, you know, uh, outsourcing uh, what what you know the way of righteousness and just kind of you know doing what what other people thought was a good thing to do. So and that that may have waited, you know woke them up. Maybe they did repent. So I, I'm, I don't know if five out of seven was going down, you know, at this point. Maybe there were more that would endure that trial. So that's a kind of a little hope, right? Where before I was very pessimistic about it, but now uh, having you know seen these these examples that Paul was referencing, having you know, and and watching Paul kind of co kind of coach. The Corinthian ecclesia through their own trial, I'm thinking, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, some of those five actually did wake up. Maybe some of those five actually did repent and endure the trial and actually survive the trial and remain a people of a, a new covenant people of God and remain an ecclesia of God through the trial. Now, it doesn't mean that they're going to, you know, uh, make it to the end because they still have to persevere to the end, right? So they may not make it to the end. They may have to go through another trial and another trial, right? Hopefully not, but, you know, we just don't know. There, there's no follow-up on these things. So we don't really know. Maybe they repented. Maybe they did persevere to the end. Maybe the odds are much greater than, you know, than, than I had originally thought with regards to an ecclesia of God actually persevering to the end, okay? So... Anyway, so that's kind of another, you know, insight that that uh, you 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 learn and you and you understand through in this journey. The, the more you kind of meditate and and think about how these things work, you know, it, it it's going to change. You're you're gonna you're gonna kind of target and narrow and, and focus in a little bit more and start get a little bit more clarity every time you you go and, and you under and you and you read the scripture and you and you start applying it you get a little bit more clarity and a little bit more clarity that's what that's what the journey is all about right um so in in any respect i i think that uh and 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 by the way i i thought maybe it might be helpful to look at um a a a parable that uh isn't often looked at but i think it's kind of interesting uh, you know it's in luke 13 in luke 13 6 through 9 okay and 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 jesus uh you know um he just got done talking about some people um apparently th there was some some this this tragedy that was reported to, to jesus about some galileans um you know who who, whose blood Pilate had mixed mixed with their sacrifices. I'm not exactly sure um, what what that you know what that entails, but that's it's not a good thing. But um, it, Jesus responds, "Do you suppose that these Galileans were greater sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered this fate? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish." So. What does that kind of remind you of? It, it reminds you of uh, a lot of you know the the kind of trials that that God would put the, you know put in the in the path of of the people of Israel to try you know to say you need to repent 
you need to turn around. You need to, it's similar to the messages to the ecclesia, okay, in, in those, you know, in, the, in five of those messages. Uh, he says, or do you suppose that those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them were worse culprits than all the men who live in Jerusalem? I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all, you will all likewise perish. And, and this is, I think, is the same idea where some, you know how some would perish in these trials and in the, in the with the, you know, uh, uh, that that the people of Israel w- were going through in the wilderness, and some would die. Right? Does that mean that those that died were worse than those that survived? And and the, and the, I think the uh, the the answer is no, probably not. No, they 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 were guilty. They're culpable, um, but they weren't any more culpable than many that survived the trial. Okay, this was just God selecting those that were going to die, and 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 the others were given this mercy, where where they were allowed to survive the trial as a people. So, um, and so that 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 can also apply in an ecclesia and a gathering, and we'll see that in in um, we'll see that in the next chapter in First Corinthians eleven, where some of 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 the members of Ecclesia have died, some got sick, some you know became weak. And and you and you're thinking, oh well those those are the worst of the worst. Well no, uh, you can't assume that. They they may not be the worst of the worst, but they were selected as 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 those that would suffer the rebuke and the discipline first, okay? And those that were spared that suffering, you know, um have I would, by God's mercy, would have another chance to to mend their, to repent and to and to mend their ways and to now follow the law of Christ. So that is is kind of a you know don't don't just assume that those that suffer the consequences of the of the sin of a gathering and 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 are rebuked and disciplined and, and they they kind of get it first before anyone else does. Um, don't don't just automatically assume that they were the they were the worst culprits. No, that's what Jesus is saying is that's not true. Um, you're all maybe you're all just as guilty. Maybe you're all just as culpable, and any one of you could have suffered, you know, instead of them, and and died instead of them. But for whatever reason, you were chosen to have this option or this opportunity to repent and to and to and to now you know serve serve christ or, or or keep the new covenant with 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 all your strength you know so um so that's just what the lesson here now then he goes into this parable he says a man has a fig tree which has been planted in his vineyard and he came looking for fruit on it and did not find any and he says to the vineyard keeper behold for three years i have come looking for fruit on this fig tree without finding any cut it down so why and why does it even use up the ground? And he, he being the vineyard keeper, answered and said to him, him being the, the owner of the vineyard, let it alone, sir, for this year too, un, un, until I dig around it and put in fertilizer. And if it bears fruit next year, fine. But if not, cut it down. So, <clears throat> um, so here you have a parable that that sounds like you know. Uh, who knows what it means? A lot. Of, a lot of people will probably the first thing they'll do is they'll they'll say the fig tree is an individual, a person of God, which really doesn't make sense because that's not generally how a person of God is illustrated in in the parables. They're always illustrated as 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 a as a, a wheat. You know, a, what do you call that? A wheat. Um, I don't know. Uh, just a. I. I, I don't know what you call one one strand of wheat. <laughs> I don't know, but usually that's that's how an individual or a branch, a branch off of a vine would be an individual. Um, you know, uh, you know, a plant that would like in the in the in the sow the seeds. You you like have a plant that would shoot up, but ne- never. I don't I don't know any any place where an individual. Is clearly represented as a tree. Okay, a tree is always, you know, the a tree would always illustrate uh, or or would be symbolic of a um, of a people, 
or or you know some some sort of uh, you know of some sort of uh, gathering or some some sort of like a grand ecclesia or 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 something like that where you would have a lot of people and so when you say fig tree usually uh that that would that would indicate something more than an individual right but the problem is it's planted in a vineyard now a vineyard usually usually indicates you know time and time again a kingdom a kingdom right a entire kingdom a kingdom of god so the owner we we have to assume is god god who owns this vineyard right and you and there's this fig tree within the vine, vineyard so what does that mean how do you how do you how can you you know make sense out of that um and and the owner comes looking for fruit on it doesn't find any and, he, and the vine and then we're talking about this vineyard keeper okay this vineyard keeper uh, and it's only one it's a singular right so who could that be well i'm thinking it's christ right is the mediator of the new covenant um and and you have this vineyard keeper and he says be and he tells this vineyard keeper behold for three years now only three years now an individual may take many years before fruit might come or you know um something that that would kind of produce fruit in three years looks more like something that uh is put together as a people of god you know that that could should produce fruit quickly because you have all of these especially in the, in the new covenant where you have a lampstand you have all of the members of the people of god having regenerate hearts there there you would expect fruit very quickly right three years is is a long time in fact you would expect fruit before that um so i've been looking for three years i i have i've come looking for fruit I haven't found any, so cut it down. In other words, you know, to disband this this people, you know, this gathering. To, you know, this one is not working. Okay, um, why does it even use up ground? And and, uh, and then he says, "Let it alone, sir." Um, for, well, first of all, let me let me just. I'm, I'm kind of assuming something that I, I haven't really explained. So this fig tree planted in a vineyard, I believe the fig tree is an ecclesia of God, a local ecclesia of God, okay? A soul ecclesia of God, all right? Um, and the vineyard is the, is the entire kingdom of God that was a network of ecclesia of God because that's generally how it works. I mean, if you really think about how is the grand ecclesia imaged on earth, understand what is the grand ecclesia? The grand ecclesia is a body of Christ, right? Now, what are the body parts? What 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 makes up the body parts of this body? You know, in my view, the body parts of the grand ecclesia is another ecclesia. Okay, so you have a it's kind of a small ecclesia would be a body part of this grand ecclesia. Okay, so you have a system within systems, right? And we have that in creation all the time, where you you have a, a you know kind of an independent system like an atom. That would that would be within another system like a molecule, which would be in another system like an object, you know, and and you go on and on. You could talk about planets and universes and and solar systems. So um, you know, where you have systems within systems and ecosystems within larger ecosystems. So so there's all this where you have this idea even even you know your body having systems within systems so you have systems within systems uh that's not unusual in creation and i and i believe that that is how the grand ecclesia is going to work where you have independent systems networked together to make a, a larger system okay um and that's that's kind of how i see the grand ecclesia uh and so if you image that on the earth you it, the image would look like a lot of local ecclesiae all connected and united together okay that's how the image should should look and i think that's what paul had in mind when he was planning all of these local ecclesiae in all the, the different parts uh, of the world and then uh you know he would always like teach the same thing this is how we do it in all the ecclesiae that we you know it's the same pattern same design everything and they should be 
uh, just as they are one in their design, they should also be one in their in their um, in their in their understanding, in their character, in their uh, you know in the mind of Christ, right? And 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 they should all, I mean, theoretically speaking, idealistically, um, they should all be united in the mind of Christ. I mean, that's how it should work. Uh, but it's it's hard, you know it, it it turns out it's hard enough just to get one local ecclesia united in the mind of Christ, much less two or three ecclesia or four or five ecclesia uh, all united together in the mind of Christ. But that's that's ideally how it should work. Okay, if if you were to truly image the grand ecclesia on earth, so um, so that that's how I think you know that was the kind of the the attitude of Paul wanting. All the ecclesiae to cooperate and to and to embrace each other and and to kind of uh, be united in that res respect and that you know that's part of the that that thing he was doing for the ecclesia in Jerusalem by taking a collection among other ecclesiae to to bring it to Jerusalem it it that's kind of a I think that was very important to him because it, it showed. A certain concern of all these other ecclesiae saying, "Yeah, we are concerned about you too." Uh, uh, the Jerusalem ecclesia, okay. Even though we don't meet together with you on a weekly or even a monthly, or maybe even on an annual basis, um, we're concerned about you, and we want to be with you, and we're and we, you know, we love you, and we care about you, and this is what we're doing. So I, I think that's why Paul made that such a high priority in his ministry because it was a very high priority for him to go around and collect these these contributions and this charity for this ecclesia in jerusalem it, it was kind of a demonstration that you're all together you know this is part of the kingdom or the grand ecclesia imaged on earth but um you know it's easily sabotaged right i mean ideally it, it sounds good but it doesn't necessarily work out practically so um, so this is what I think is going on. You have this fig tree, this local ecclesia that's planted in his vineyard, okay? And this vineyard being all of the ecclesiae on earth um, together and, and hopefully becoming one. Um, and, so, and so he's looking at this one local ecclesia and saying, hey, wh where's the fruit? And, and, and the vineyard keeper is saying, well, just wait, hang on. Uh, you know, I know it's been three years, and I know you want to cut it down, but let me uh, intercede on behalf of this uh, of this vic of this fig tree. And what is that? That is that is Christ as the mediator of the new covenant, interceding on behalf of a gathering, okay, uh, of one of his people, right? I mean, his and and so he is. It's just like Moses interceded. Uh, on behalf of the people of God that was designated in the Old Covenant, um, Christ intercedes on behalf of a people of God that's designated under the New Covenant. So he'll intercede on behalf of each of these peoples of God that are on the globe, at, you know, at one at one time. And so he's that he's our mediator. He's the one that intercedes for us. The, God may come and say, "Hey, you know, there's no, nothing going on here," you know. This is supposed to be my gathering. It's an ecclesia of God. It's supposed to be my gathering, and nothing's happening. So cut it down, and 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 the mediator, Jesus Christ, will say, "Well, wait, wait a minute, wait. A minute. Let's just hang on. Let's give it. You know, can we give it just one more year? Can we just give it? And I'm going to dig around it, and I'm going to put fertilizer. And what is that digging around it and putting fertilizer? What is that about? That's the rebuke. That's the discipline. That's that's the intercession." That, that Jesus will do or or how Jesus is going to uh, try to provoke repentance from the ecclesia you know so so this is where he, he, Jesus Jesus is going to put the ecclesia through a trial to 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 uh, motivate them to repent he's going to put them through a trial to motivate them to repent and hopefully um, they will repent and begin to produce fruit and that's that's the goal you know next year give it a year i'm gonna you know i'm gonna really focus my energies on this ecclesia and i'm gonna you know send them a message okay i'm gonna send them a message and and if they 
if they respond to that message and I and I'm going to send, you know, I, I'm going to make it, you know, I'm going to put them through some tribulation. I'm going to put them through some struggle and, and some trials. And and if they respond properly and repent from their ways and 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 begin to embrace your ways, God, uh, Father, then then um then everything's fine. Then they'll start producing fruit. Okay. And if they don't repent, if if they blow it off, if if they if they don't you know, respond properly, they won't survive the trial and they will be, you know, cut down. So that's kind of what I think this parable is about right here. Uh, this is really a parable uh, about Jesus interceding on behalf of one of his people, uh, one of the local ecclesia of God and, and where he's the, where Jesus is the head and, and, you know, the ecclesia is the bot is his body. Right, so he's interceding on on their behalf, and and he's saying, you know, just give it a year, you know, please, and then he's going to go and 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 push this ecclesia through a trial, and 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 put tribulation on him, to dig around it, going to put fertilizer, trying to get, trying to wake them up, trying to get them to grow, trying to trying to get this this uh, this fig tree to wake up and and start to produce fruit and to repent. And 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 turn from their their ways and to, and to follow the ways of God. So that's what I see as far as uh, this this particular parable. Now, um, so so this this is this is as far as I want to go on this on this particular episode, um, and and give you a break. <laughs> uh, you know, we're we're talking about a little over an hour right now. Um, because in the next in the next episode, I want to I want to spend more time on on you know uh, the, uh, the the whole idea of of where he's going with with making this other argument to these uh, I, I believe they're Jewish believers you know basically saying look um, this whole trial thing this infection this this idea of of a of a of a sin or a or a behavior that is not holy that 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 can defile a gathering, uh, you know this uh, eating at the idol's temple may be one of those things that could actually infect others in a very bad way and and could create a, a real problem for for the gathering as a whole and you're gonna in essence. Uh, or, or you put you, you could provoke uh, Christ to jealousy and 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 the, the result of which would be for the gathering to go through a trial and and and, and I believe there there was a trial already ongoing and that has to do with the idea with the with the Lord's Supper which is what he's going to talk about which what Paul's going to talk about you know uh, in the next passage so I'm going to say that for the next episode but I wanted to in this episode, just kind of do a follow up on the the idea of trials and and the stages that that it goes through in an ecclesia and kind of um, make some uh, connect some dots with the ecclesia's prayer with the messages in, in Revelation just to kind of see how it all plays out and you can kind of see it throughout the scripture you know throughout the teachings of Christ this parable here and the teachings of Christ and how it how you know the messages to revelation and how Paul is dealing with it and it's all very consistent it's all very consistent and and it, the the concern is real in an ecclesia of God because it's a holy gathering okay so things that you can do outside a holy gathering where you don't have to worry about dying you don't have to worry about rebukes and disciplines um, you can't, you cannot do inside a holy gathering, and that's just very important to understand. A holy gathering is a whole different ballgame. Okay, uh, you, 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 you know things that that you wouldn't think twice about as a gathering um, outside that, that outside an ecclesia of God. Uh, you would have to think really hard about if you were in an ecclesia of God. Okay, so it's a whole different ballgame. It, it's it's a game changer. You you better get your head on straight, and that's what we're going to talk about in the next episode, because that's what the Lord's Supper is there to do, is to, is to is to make sure that you're getting your head right, and and you're understanding where you are and who and 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 who you are as a member 
of a body of Christ and what that means and the responsibilities, the obligations that comes with it. Um, so these are things we're going to say for the next episode. But uh, um, so, yeah, it, it, this, these things build upon each other, okay? And, and the more you understand, the more you see it, and the more you see the connections uh, and how what Paul talks about in the Corinthian Ecclesia and how Jesus talked about it in the parables and the messages, the revelation, and how all this stuff just kind of just, it's very consistent, it's very, uh, very potent, very meaningful, very deep, and, and it just, it just, you know, it's just, it's just makes it all very real. Even though we have yet to experience it, it, it would be nice if, we, and I, and I, like I said before, if there is a, a real yearning to be part of an ecclesia of God, and I believe God will give that to us because that's what the Father does. But, um, you know, it would be nice going in with your eyes open. You know, it would be nice going into an ecclesia of God with some really good understanding of what to watch out for, of what to be careful about. I mean, you'll you'll never be fully prepared, right? Because once you're in, it's going to be a different world. I mean, you know, these these kinds of teachings, this kind of understanding is certainly going to help. It's certainly going to give you a huge head start and 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 a, a big advantage that, for instance, the, the Corinthian ecclesia didn't maybe didn't have. Um, we can learn from these letters of Paul and we can learn how other ecclesiae struggled or how they made it through or what they did right, what they did wrong. We can learn from that and be, and, and, and to understand it. And, and that way when we're going in, even though we don't have the, the benefit of the teachings of Paul directly face to face, which would be awesome, right? Which is what they had, I guess. Maybe they were still had a greater advantage than we do but we can still have uh you know go in with some with your eyes open understanding what to expect understanding a little bit of what of what to watch out for how to approach it um and and to take it very seriously obviously because it, it is a very serious thing when you're going into a, a holy new covenant temple of god you 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 know you better you you better respect that and you better understand that and because um, you don't want to just go in there and start, you know, writing graffiti all over the temple. You know what I'm saying? So you, you want to be very, very careful what you're doing. And But at the same time, there's a lot of joy. There's a lot of wonders. There's a lot of miracles that will happen. There's The spirit will be will be just hyperactive and, and, and there, the growth will be insane. I mean, the, the way that people will grow would be more than, than you could imagine. Okay. So in any, in any event, um, so this is, you know, we continue on and, and we continue the journey. And um, uh, thank you again for being with me. Uh, I, you know, uh, I appreciate every single one of you. I know there's not a lot of them, but I appreciate you. And, and I appreciate you, uh, you know, your feedback and, and whatever else you can give me. Uh, but until next time, thank you for watching.